Okay, everybody, all series jump the shark at some point or another, but none of them, none of them have done it with the complete awesomeness of this. Okay, everybody, today we are going back to 1979 to check out James Bond and his little adventure into the world of Star Wars, Moonraker. Oh, my God, I love this movie. Anyway, 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 we'll get to all that later. But before we go any further, before we dive into this gem anymore, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. Hey, this motion picture was directed by Lewis... Gilbert. Mm, did some shit you might know, including another James Bond flick. Let's hit it. We're talking about he did stuff like Alfie, and he did Sink the Bismarck, which you should all watch. That was a really good flick. And The Slasher, and Educating Rita. Come on, who doesn't remember that? And Wall of Death. And he also did The Spy Who Loved Me, when we're talking about the James Bond universe. And he did another little movie called Shirley Valentine, which was like a cute little Kind of a comedy flick, you know, almost like a chick flick, but it was still a good movie. You should check it out. Okay, playing 007 himself, my second favorite Bond of all times, Roger Moore. Let's hit it. We're talking about he was in stuff like Folks, which was a really, really, really good movie, and you should check it out and catch it sometime. And The Sea Wolves, and Escape to Athena, and The Cannonball Run, and The Quest. And the Wild Geese, which you gotta see too. And of course he was James Bond and, and like, you know, Live and Let Die and The Spy Who Loved Me and The Man with the Golden Gun and For Your Eyes Only and Octopussy and A View to a Kill. And there's probably some in there I'm forgetting. Who the hell knows? And obviously, 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 he will also be known from his role on TV as the Saint. Come on, Roger Moore. Fucking legend. Okay, playing Dr. Holly Goodhead. Lois Childs. Now, we just talked about her not too long ago when we covered Coma. So let's go into it again. We're talking about she was in stuff like Broadcast News and Death on the Nile and Speed 2 and The Great Gatsby and Coma, which you know I already mentioned, but it just went through my head again, so I said it again. And The Way We Were. And she was on TV in Dallas and L.A. Law. So she had a really good career, is what it was. Popped up in some shit that we all love and remember. Hey, can't knock that. Playing drugs. Michael Onsdale. Yeah, pretty good career, especially overseas, but pretty good career. We're talking about he was in stuff like Day of the Jackal, and Ronin, and Munich, and Don Juan, and My Life is Him, and the Holocroft Covenant, and The Passage, and a whole bunch of movies overseas so good career amazing career hell of a fucking head of hair on this guy too props sir anyway let's keep it moving playing jaws oh one of my favorites richard keel big man in real life big heart good guy is what it was Let's get going. We're talking about he was on stuff like uh, The Rifleman and Twilight Zone and Lassie and The Man from Uncle and The Wild Wild West and The Barbary Coast. And of course, he was in movies like, you know, Pale Rider and Force 10 from Navarone and The Spy Who Loved Me, obviously, and The Humanoid and The Longest Yard. So, he had a good movie career and television career for a guy with a distinctive look. Okay, playing M. Bernard Lee. A lot of James Bond flicks, people. Let's kick this shit. We're talking about he was in stuff like Dr. No. And Live and Let Die. And The Man with the Golden Gun. And Diamonds Are Forever. And From Russia With Love. And Goldfinger. And Thunderball. And You Only Live Twice. And he was on TV and shit like, you know, General Hospital and The Foundation. And uh, The King of the River. And stuff like that. So, good career. Long career. Is what it was. Okay. Playing Q. <sighs> Probably more Bond flicks than any other actor. Including the guys that played fucking James Bond. Just the way it goes. Desmond Llewellyn. 
I, I always screw up the way I say his last name. I hope I said it right. Who the fuck knows? But I've been screwing it up for goddamn 50 years. I'm going to screw it up some more. Anyway, let's roll. We're talking about he played Q in the Sean Connery era. He played Q in the Roger Moore era. He played Q in the Timothy Dalton era. He even played Q in the Pierce Brosnan era. Are you fucking kidding me? Plus, he was in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and Silent Playground and Princess of Rio and tons 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 of television work that I'm not going to get into right now because it's just fucking just too much of it. Anyway, he was in them all, folks. He was in them all. We're talking, if there's James Bond royalty, past the people that actually play James Bond, he's it. Plain and simple. Okay, everybody, I'm going to give you a story in 90 seconds or less, and I'm going to keep this really short, keep it really sweet, keep it moving, so we can get to the part of this that we all really like more anyway, the summation. And, and let me just say, you know James Bond movies are fucking convoluted, and there's 10 million storylines going on and all that kind of shit, so I'm really going to give you the bare bones of what this thing is about, and I'm really just going to give you the overview, because there's so much shit going on in so different directions, it's just insanity. It is what it is. Anyway, you got this guy, Drax. He makes... Space shuttles. He's a multi quadrillion bazillion, dedillion, billionaire of all kinds of epic proportions. And he's a bit of a psychotic prick. Anyway, he has an idea. He is going to take the human race and completely exterminate it and replace it with his own group of perfect individuals to repopulate the planet with his race of perfect individuals. Well, of course, somewhere along the line, James Bond stumbles onto that, and then he winds up hooking up with a female agent who's from the United States, Dr. Goodhead. And they team up together to stop the evil Drax. And in the middle of that, you have one of James Bond's most famous nemesis, Jaws. Who, does he stay bad? Does he turn good? What's he going to do? Does it really matter? Who really cares? Anyway, that's the gist of the story in this. I'm not going to walk everybody through it and say, oh, it starts out with a guy stealing a Moonraker shuttle and all that kind of shit. Whatever. You get the idea. Bad guy trying to destroy the world, replace it with a super race, and a couple of agents stumble onto it and try to stop it. And there's a lot of sex and shit. Whatever. You know. James Bond! Okay, everybody. Why does this motion picture work? And I assure you... <laughs> It fucking works. First, let's go over the basics. It's a James Bond flick. You get the normal stuff that you get in a James Bond flick. It's gorgeous to look at. It's shot beautiful. It really is. I mean, you get the exotic locations. You get all the atmosphere of these different countries and different continents. It is just beautiful to see. It's beautiful to look at. And it's beautiful to take in. The soundtrack awesome. I mean, come on, even the Moonraker theme fucking kicks ass in this motion picture. You know you're going to get that, you get that, and it works. This motion picture is loaded with stunts and actions. It's almost insane, really. I don't know if any of the other James Bond movies even fucking came close to this. I don't think there's more than literally an eight-minute spot in this motion picture before some kind of shit breaks loose. I mean, you know, they're in a giant tram car fight that's going up in the city, and all of a sudden, three seconds later, they're fighting in the ambulance that picked them up from the tram car, and then two minutes later, he's, I mean, it's just stunt after stunt after stunt after stunt, and they all look great. They all are played well, from the car chases, to the boat chases, to the fight scenes, to taking on a snake to having a boat turn into a glut, whatever, whatever's going on, they pound you over the head with it. It's nonstop, it's relentless, and it's ridiculous. And it's one of those things that you really like and enjoy from a James Bond flick. I mean, if ever a James Bond movie was like a few minutes of dialogue, crazy scene, a few minutes of dialogue, crazy scene, a few minutes of dialogue, crazy scene, this is the one. But all that being said, all that shit, being said that I just listed, why is this such a great James Bond movie? What makes this such a great James Bond movie? What is it? 
It's that it's utterly fucking ridiculous, and they knew it. They gave you a comedy, James Bond. I'm talking this thing is fucking funny and ridiculous. Now, if you're an old school James Bond purist, sure that shit might have pissed you off a bit. But from a guy like me, who's seen this when he was like nine years old, this shit was awesome. This is literally halfway between traditional James Bond and a fucking airplane movie. I am serious. They did sight gags, they did word gags, they did everything in this thing just to make it funny. It wasn't heavy, it wasn't oppressive, it wasn't like you ever really felt the fate of mankind dependent on this fucking thing. Because come on, James Bond, the whole thing is kind of fucking ridiculous anyway. One guy who can do everything without fail always takes on a super villain with endless money and endless henchmen and he somehow pulls off the great victory that we know would never happen they even realize at one point or another this is fucking stupid so what we're going to do is we're going to have a laugh with it we are going to have a send up this is before the naked gun flicks this is before any of that shit they just said let's have a good time and almost lampoon what we do and they did it brilliantly. Why? Because you still got all the shit you wanted from a James Bond movie, the crazy gadgets, the hot chicks, James Bond banging everything that walks, the excitement, the action, the stunts, and you got ridiculous amounts of comedy that just worked for what it was. You couldn't help it. The little gags they would put in, like in the, the keyboard thing, and it was the fucking theme, the Close Encounters, are you shitting me? I couldn't believe when I heard that. I was like, oh my fucking God, this is great. There's other parts of the movie too, where they do things like, you know, he comes riding in at horseback and they're playing all that old country Western music that you would hear every guy in like fucking wagon trains show up on a horse and it was awesome. There's parts in this motion picture where they just blatantly sped up the film for reasons I don't even understand why. And it just took it from being an action scene to being like, they mean they made that funny i don't think they they made that funny and that was what this motion picture is loaded with from the fact that jaws can never die no matter what happens to him to the fact that james bond jaws half the people in this are just shooting each other fucking shit eating grins left and right like they know this is fucking ridiculous and we're just here to have a good time everybody was in on it and then they let you in on it which made it all the fucking better Plus, let's be blatantly honest, this James Bond was a response to what had happened a couple years prior. Folks, we all know what the big elephant in their living room was, Star Wars. Star Wars was a couple years before that. And because of that, the onslaught of everything to do with space came flying out from every angle. Star Trek came back out of fucking nowhere. The black hole popped up. Battlestar Galacta was floating around. The only thing you could really... And a whole bunch of beat movies too, by the way. And the only thing you could really do was take everything, chuck his ass into space. And they decided to do that with James Bond too. It's just the way it went. It's just the way it was. And it was entertaining. As a kid, I actually had that, what do they call those little things with the fucking round disc you put in and you would ring it. And it was the 3D images of Moonraker. And I loved it. I would watch the movie on HBO. Then I'd go sit there with my little fucking whatever that thing was and take it all in. It was meant for a younger audience. It was played for a younger audience. It was designed for a younger audience, but still in a way that adults would like it and delivered to you and given to you, and it was perfect. Everybody, if there's some of you out there that have never seen this James Bond flick, give it a shot. If there's some of you out there that just don't like fucking James Bond flicks, give this a shot. Even if you're a purist who has seen this, and was outraged because they're like turning James Bond into a comedy character. And I get it. You know what I mean? It's like when fucking Kiss made a disco song. You're kind of like, huh? Hey, still a good song. But that's what I'm talking about. It's just one of those things that if you let go of what was before and you take it as it is and you take it for what it is, uh, I can't imagine you're not going to have a fun time watching this flick. It's fucking utter ridiculous. Everybody, be good. Take care. Look out for a neighbor, help a friend, be kind to a stranger, and above all else, never, ever, 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 ever take any bullshit from anybody. 
See you soon.